Welcome to another edition of the official Catch Up Podcast. We're back two weeks in the trot. Uh, we covered off the Lone League uh, preview last season. We had the first round of games. It started on Saturday. Uh, we'll be back to cover the West of Scotland, East Scotland and the South of Scotland today. We'll cover off a little bit about the Lone League as well, uh, given those first matches. But I'm joined, as always, by Chris. Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Uh, regular Sunday morning slash afternoon for us um it'll be good to get back into the routine obviously and uh yeah we as you said we we talk more predominantly about the the lone league uh so it'll be good to to see what uh our thoughts are on the tier five well tier six and below i guess all the tiers this year aren't it tiers yeah. six seven eight and nine so we've got plenty <laughs> plenty to cover off uh across the uh, the low one league, let's be honest, uh, and everything else in between. Um, as I say, we'll start off then in the low one league, and we had the first round of fixtures took place, kicking off on Friday night, and that started off with Hearts B versus Iran 2008, and that ended up in a 7 0 win for Hearts B. A great start for, for Hearts B coming out of the traps flying there, Chris. Yeah, we did kind of question whether Hearts would have a, a similar squad to last season or not. It looks like they have, obviously. Uh, McLucky, uh, Kirk, these sort of guys, uh, you know, producing the results, obviously. And I think they'll do better this season, obviously, having the, the season's experience from last year. So it's a tough one for Gretna. I think no two ways about it, obviously. A 7 0 defeat, not ideal. Um, I think the one hope for them is obviously they've still got boys that. Um, that need to gel, and I think they're still missing a few, obviously. Franny, we mentioned, obviously, is still injured, so it's a difficult start, it really is, but one thing I will say is it doesn't get any easier. Let's face it, you look at the league now, and there's just no easy games, say more than, obviously, the other results, but it's going to be very difficult for Gretna. But fair play to Hearts, I think uh, I think they'll do a lot better, um, given... It depends, it depends, obviously, because there could still be you know loans out and whatnot for for some of the, the the players that I think will will progress. So it depends. You know, we mentioned obviously um, some of the players being on fringes of first team, so they might want to keep them in the the B squad just to to have around the club, if you will. Yeah, I think the thing as well for Hearts B will be that they have probably had another year to to gel and get get streetwise within the the low league, and that's something yeah. that probably last season they didn't have because they were quite young. Probably maybe lacked a bit of physicality in the squad, but uh, everyone's a year older probably had the summer in the gym, all that kind of stuff on the right diets. These guys will be getting getting ready for, for men's football and that's that's probably what you're you're going to see from this season. A better team. You've obviously not got Rangers B in, in the uh, Lone League this year. So Hearts B really want to be want to be the best of the B teams that they'll be aiming for. I think when Rangers and Celtic B are both in it together, it's a harder chance for Hearts to compete with them, but they maybe feel they can they can outdo Celtic and that's maybe what kind of their target might be this year but certainly a great result for, for them and I think I probably want to just comment as well on, on Gretna I know I was quite critical of them last week uh, on the podcast and a few fans upset about the comments uh, it's one of these things I do this podcast and I try and be as honest as I can about football and I'm not here to to be to be all pally and nice about about teams because uh, I get on with a certain person or I, or I don't get on with another person. I'm going to tell, tell you what I, I genuinely believe in football and that's just what it is. And believe it or not, people like to listen to what Chris and I have to say and, and that's what it is. And it's just all about giving opinions and and unfortunately for Gwyneth, that's that's my views and I don't mean it in a bad way or any sort of malice. Or, uh, I just from what I've seen so far of of the teams and the way they're shaping up for the season and. I just don't see an awful lot of hope for getting, and I hope they can prove me wrong because I do actually like the people um, involved at, at Gretna that I do speak to. So that I just want to caveat that because I know a few uh, upset a few last week. So oh, one thing I will add to that, Ben, is I believe actually the general consensus, uh, like it or not, um, I do believe even within football, even you know at low league level, uh, believe it will be between Edinburgh Uni and Gretna. So I think we're seeing anything outlandish, you know, um, and I think you're right. I hope. I hope both clubs prove us wrong and it's potentially a, a proper dogfight because the last few years we've, we've had probably one or two really bad teams in the league and it's not really been a fight, but, you know. Um, but it, sometimes it's not about the club. For example, I, I believe probably all the bottom half clubs have strengthened, but the problem is 
because of that, it makes it even more difficult because the top sides have strengthened. It's nothing to do with, oh, I think they're weaker this season or whatever else. It's just the, the league's getting stronger. Clubs are getting stronger. Teams are getting stronger. And it's very difficult, uh, particularly at the start of the season, to, to give predictions. But So we can only go on our initial thoughts. But I, I think that is important to mention. I think I do believe that is the consensus. Uh, and we're probably not went in it, with anything really wild by saying Edinburgh Uni and Gretna. Uh, to be near the bottom. Nah, that's it. I think it, it is what it is in terms of the opinion, but we will we'll keep an eye and obviously we'll talk about it through the season. If, if I do uh, have a bit of form and, and do well, then we'll be there to talk good things about it as well as yep. the, the negative. That's what we do in this podcast. Um, some folk, rightly or wrongly, don't like it when we talk negatively about their clubs or their players, but unfortunately for, for them, um, that's just part and parcel of football and, and media and, and I guess punditry, if you like, if you want to call it that, within football. But again, as I say, we'll, we'll talk about the, the good things about clubs and players. That's that's how we are, and we'll always be like that in this podcast. We're not going to be, as I say, nicey nicey, all friends every day of the week because that's probably quite boring as a podcast. Personally, we're, I we're far from talk sport to be fair. Yeah, yeah I mean, aye, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're on. We don't sit in the fence, but we don't go heavy one way or heavy the other way. We <laughs> we call it as we see it, and that's what it's all about. Uh, and hopefully they will, everyone will keep listening. If you don't like it, you can turn off as well. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not bothered with that. If you really don't like what we say, you don't have to watch us or have to listen to us. That's that's part and parcel of, of podcasting. <laughs> you pick, pick and choose what you like to listen to or watch. Anyway, we move on to the rest of the games in the Lowland League. It was Lithgow and Rose 3, University of Stirling 1, Edinburgh Uni 3, Civil Service Strollers 4, East Stirlingshire 1, Trinite 2, East Kilbride 2, Broomhill 1, Cumberland Colts 1, Celtic B 0, Caledonian Braves 1, Berwick 0, Bonus United 3, Gala Ferdinand Rovers 0. A couple of results probably stand out, Chris. We'll go straight to East Kilbride, Broomhill. Uh, it's a win for the uh, first one in the league for, for Mick Kennedy and he's, he's new East Kilbride side. Yeah, um, kind of similar to what we said last year. I, I don't think Broom, Broomhill will be any pushovers this season and they, they were so close to getting a draw there. Yeah. Um I think it's some they were beaten by an absolute cracking goal, uh, McGrory. So it's a difficult one for Broomhill. I think they'll be disappointed not to 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 get the draw there. But East Coast Bride will start while win at K Park is probably no surprise. But yeah, um more confident with with Broomhill. Uh, a lot of people tipping them to be bottom half. I just, I just don't see it. No. I don't think they've got. I think they've got a decent team, obviously, and they've signed uh, signed a few sort of league standard players as well. Uh, will they be challenging? Probably not. But Swifty's got a proven track record uh, in this re- league of being, uh, you know, top six, top four. So you never know. I think it will be difficult, obviously, because of a brand new team, almost brand new club, I guess, going reverting back uh, as well. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, fair play to East Coast picking up um, a win, but. I think one of the reasons that wasn't the, re- the result of the day or whatever for me is because it probably was expected that East Coast Bride beat Br- uh, Broomhill. Yeah, I think on paper you look at the two sides and you look at what the squad they've built East Coast Bride and, and some of the performance they've put in in pre-season, they do look very, very capable, no <laughs> doubt about that. But I think Broomhill can take a lot out of the game, positives, yep. uh, in the sense of they probably matched East Coast Bride for the majority of the game. It was close. It wasn't a, It wasn't as if East Kilbride came out and absolutely smoked him five six now. It was. It was tight. As you say, Swifty knows what he's doing. He's very very capable as a manager, and he also knows how to recruit well. I think that's the other thing that stands out for me. That squad that we mentioned, it's got some good players, and and if he has in a bit of a trouble and needs to bring in players, he'll know where to go and to get the right players. He has good connections. He's about to get guys in and loan maybe from League One, League League One, League Two for example, so uh, no worries about Broomhill for me at all, I, I agree with you Chris, I think they'll be, I don't think they'll be challenging personally, but just because I think East Coast Bide and Tonight probably are the team that are going to be, be right up there like we, we discussed last week, but no doubt about it, I think they'll be they'll be strong top half, maybe top six, I think they've got they've got that in them uh, when you look at some of the other results across the league, uh, it'll be interesting to see how, they, how it pans out so another good result to point out then for the Opening day was uh, Cumberland Colts beating Celtic B one 0 Chris at uh, Broadwood. Not so much of a shock to be honest, because Cumberland Colts have that in their bag. Obviously, they 
that's one thing they're known for. They they can uh, pick up um, really good results against you know the likes of East Kilbride and the, the top teams. We've seen it in the past, and I always find it really weird that people are tipping them for relegation. Um, I don't think they're going to be massive shakes in this league, despite the the result on Saturday. But I mean, they won fourteen games last year. They lost eighteen. There wasn't much of a difference in terms of the the games they won and lost. And you just don't see that with bad teams. You, it, it would be so heavily swayed to the the losing sort of column, if you will. They didn't have a lot of draws, in fairness. So it was the kind of with that all or nothing team. But Colts, yeah, it, it does baffle me that people are tipping them. Um, do I think they're going to have a, a great season? I'm, I'm not so sure, but what an excellent, excellent result against Celtic B. And a Celtic B, in fairness, that's, um, we mentioned it last week, obviously. We, they have lost a lot of key players, and there's a couple that have went up to the, the first team. So, But if you still look at that squad, you're still looking. That's a, a quality side that you probably expect to challenge. So fair play to the Colts, and then Billy Mortimer getting the goal as well. So... Um, but yeah, one thing we, we kind of talked about teams gelling and stuff. The Colts, albeit haven't strengthened loads, uh, they won't need the time to gel because that team kind of knows each other, uh, which is an advantage for the, the other sides that are probably going to be near the bottom. So yeah, I just I just don't see Colts getting relegated. It's maybe my bias coming into play, but um, what what are your thoughts, Ben, on on the Colts? No, I agree. I don't think uh, I don't think Colts are going to be a team that will that will go down. Personally, based on what we've, we've said about the other, the other kind of couple of teams towards the bottom, I don't think there'll be any great shakes. I'm, I'm expecting them probably a similar kind of level finish to where they were last season. Was it fifteenth or fourteenth or some of that on the table in the end? But I feel like they'll probably be there or thereabouts. But they're a team that they can probably keep, continue to build. They'll be there for the long term. I think in the lower league, I don't I think for now they're going to be a team that will be in any great danger of going down. Obviously, we've said multiple times that the division's getting stronger and stronger every year, especially the, the more chance you're going to have with um, West Scotland teams coming up. I think when you look at maybe the east of Scotland at the moment, it's maybe not as strong as the west of Scotland. Personally, that's maybe me being biased in my, my west is best approach coming out <laughs> right there. But certainly, I feel like the league's going to get stronger and Cumberland is just going to have to continue to improve and, and build on each year and, and try and stay in that lonely that if, if, if I assume that's what they want to do. Every team wants to get out there out there and get into to League Two, I, I'd imagine. So they, they'll they'll be fine. I think I don't think there'll be a massive issue there if we come on our coach, but it's a good one in terms of beating CFDB it's start top top side and they'll they'll be more than more than capable over the season CFDB, but uh, probably Surprising result more for me because I think we're expecting Celtic to start well, but I guess it depends where their squads are. They may have still get players, probably like we're talking about with Hartsby, who are maybe on the fringe, still kind of with the first team at the moment, kind of to see seeing what's happening under uh, Brendan Rogers, and then maybe you'll find that guys will drop down into back into the B team uh, at some point. Uh, the other one that stands out for me then, Chris, is Bonnes ninety three Galfred Dean Rovers no uh, great result for Bonnes. I think we thought maybe they would struggle this year, but uh, what we start of the season? Yeah, um, well, we, we kind of called it that they they might surprise a few, and they certainly have the opening day. Uh, one of the the signings that we probably didn't talk about is Scott Dial coming to the club, a very experienced striker, an absolute bagsman. Apparently, still has it. Uh, I'm reliably informed by someone at the game that he sort of he might have put Gala to the sword for the for the whole time he was playing and it's great to see Dazzler do that because uh, he was always that type of player at Kelty. He was always a really good sort of target man. He, he'd been playing sort of lower down at Armadale the last sort of few years. So uh, an interesting signing because I did highlight obviously young Finn Malcolm potentially being their, their, their sort of main forward. But it looks like he's going to probably be eased into the team kind of similar to, to what happened at Broomhill on loan. And maybe... Obviously, albeit Finn's a, a really good player and technically good, uh, he might he might lack that wee bit of experience. So to see um, them bringing in someone like Scott Dial, obviously with mega experience, I think it could be a really genius pack up really by Bonus. They seem to be making the right move. Stuart Hunter really been impressed. Although I, I don't believe, uh, I think they had signings coming in before he was appointed manager. I think Finn Malcolm was one of them. So. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the dynamic there. But got to talk about Ryan Porteous. One of the reasons I didn't mention him last week is um, 
simply because he's he's a player that's a really good player. He was always a standout at Newton Green star, but it's his first sort of step up. I mean, what a way to step up with bagging two goals in your your uh, first competitive uh, appearance for Bonus. So I mean, Ryan Ryan's a really good player and um, a really really good pick up again by Bonus United. So everything positive there. I said about Gala potentially being one to to look out for in terms of uh, results, and it's. Uh, they got absolutely battered yesterday, um, which is a shame for them, obviously. But um, a brilliant start from Bonnet, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. Um, I think that's one of the things to to see how they go forward if they can keep pulling out results like that against the the you know these sort of teams and that were at their level last season. It'll be uh, interesting to see if they can push up the table. That's pretty much it for us on the long league games that happened on Saturday. We've got a card of fixtures happening. Uh, midweek this week within the Lone League they do the, the Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday kind of start of the the season and you have Broomhill versus Lithgow Rose, Trinent versus Edinburgh Uni, Galfrey Dean Rovers versus East Stirlingshire, Civil Service Strolls versus Hearts B, Celtic B versus Cali Braves, Bear Rangers versus Bonnet United, University of Stirling versus Cumbernauld Colts, Greta 2008 versus East Coast Bride are uh, the fixtures there and I say it's it's interesting to see how teams react to the, the kind of the quick turnaround of you know, Tuesday Wednesday games coming up, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing we never actually pointed out is obviously Albion Rovers had a fantastic cup win over uh, over Annan Athletic, obviously a League One side, and I think Ken, Ken Beef obviously drew another League One side one one and uh, beating on penalties in the cup. So shout outs to them, obviously. Really excited about Albion this season and Cowden Beef as well. Actually, I think they've they've done really well in the cup so far. Obviously. I've, you know, Albion losing to to Rafe, but Rafe are you know a championship team. So, um, I'll be interested when they finally um, start playing low league games. But yeah, uh, in terms of the in terms of the the fixtures there, obviously you're probably looking at Gretna East Coast Bride. Uh, I do worry having you know uh, seen Hearts put seven past Gretna, um, I think East Coast Bride might yeah, might be a, another source score line for for Gretna. Uh, there, which is is a bit concerning early early doors, but we'll wait and see. Hopefully, they at home they they can play a wee bit better, and um, and it's not like a an avalanche sort of scoreline, if you will. We'll move across to the different divisions uh, or the different leagues across uh, the Lowland League area, I guess we we'll call it, Chris. The, the different parts of uh, the the south. I think I mean, it's hard, isn't it? Does it? You can't call it the South of Scotland because the South of Scotland League it's the Lowland League, but then the Lowland League itself. So, what do you call the kind of the tiers below? I don't actually. Does that uh, even have a name? I'm guessing it's just. I'm I, I'm guessing it's I'm guessing it's the Lowland League. Saint, I don't know. I don't know. Lowland I don't League even... regions or something. Maybe we need yeah. to put a term. I mean, let's <laughs> let's Because we obviously it. don't cover the Highland League or the Midlands League, so it's yeah, a bit. So it's everything uh, below the the whatever the the factitious line is between Midlands and um, the Lowland League but um, yeah it's, it just came to me there I was like I've definitely got a bit of um, confusion about what that, that area is called but anyway we'll move on and we'll start with the South of Scotland League for a change we normally start in the East but we'll start in the South uh, it'll be an, an interesting season down in the South I'm sure they'll have a million cup competitions uh, to start the to start the season and remember get league games probably in October or something, Chris. They lost uh, a team in the Cali Braves reserves, I guess, or the Cali Braves uh, B team, which has pulled out. Obviously, Dalbiti going in. Um, one thing we kind of talked about last season was potential of uh, Glasgow Wellington going into the South, which uh, didn't happen, obviously. So it's probably more straightforward than it has been in previous years with odd teams and whatnot. So I've not really seen much. I mean, Obviously, I've been keeping up with transfers and stuff like that. I see. I saw that like Stephen Degnan went to Nifty Wanderers, for example, a good a good player. Um, they'll be a star. Obviously, they're they're going to be rebuilding. I'd probably expect them to to potentially challenge, but I'm still looking at the likes of Abbey Vale, Lockhart Thistle, Creetown. I think it could be an exciting league next year in terms of challengers. Uh, I will be keeping a close eye on they'll be a star though. Um, to, to, to see what they've, they've done. They obviously lost a few players, but uh, in terms of the actual South, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet in terms of, I've not, I don't have an idea in my mind of um, who would be my favourite 
uh, unlike the Lowland League and uh, unlike probably the East and the the, the West, simply because um, I think it's going to be like last season, Ben, where there's probably going to be potentially three, four teams all going for it. You do worry, obviously, about your your Wigtown and Bladnicks who, who could barely fail the team last year. I don't, hopefully that situation has changed. I'm not actually sure. Yeah, so wait and see with the South. It was pretty much a wait and see with the South uh, a lot of last season, but we kind of did predict the, the top three. So our predictions weren't that bad for the South. I think the one you mentioned for me, Chris, to watch out for is that is Nisty Wanderers. I think you mentioned yeah. the name there that they've added. Uh, they also brought in Sean McKenzie from Glenafton and, and Cameron McKenzie also from Glenafton. Two brothers are, I think, from that area. Um believe uh, one of them had signed for uh, multiple clubs uh, within the uh, the West Scotland Premier League and uh, for whatever reasons ended up playing in his local team. So he's a very, very capable striker at, at the West Scotland Premier League level, never mind uh, the South has come, so I'm sure he'll go down there and rip up, rip it up, and score plenty of goals for from this deal. So if they are added some some nice pieces to their team, I think they'll be they'll be pretty strong and one to watch. They'll beat your style, like you mentioned. We know they're they're going to be capable. They'll have the probably the 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 facility, the funds to to maybe go and have a, a stronger squad. I'd, I'd assume I think they'll probably not be like the Dalby star of old that we know, but you know they had a bit of trouble last year getting relegated, but they'll be coming into that league to to go to bounce back. Straight into the the playoff, and it'll be obviously it'll be difficult. Let's be let's not let's not get it um, any other way here for any team from the south. Probably coming into that playoff situation that we have, it's going to be challenging for uh, for any of them to, to move up uh, into the uh, the lone league. But as I say, uh, it'll be an interesting watch, and we'll cover it as we always do uh, as much as we can, as much coverage as we can find on online. We'll we'll use that to our advantage and and cover off what's happening. But. Um, can I push you for a prediction, Chris, on who's going to win the league? I'll go with Abbey Vale again, just because my, my main man, Aidan Kerr, is there. And, uh, oh, well, all the cares are there. And uh, I think it was great that they won it last year, their first sort of title. Um, I'll go with that again, but I am wary, obviously, that there has been a lot of improvement in the South with some of the top teams. Um, like you mentioned, obviously, uh, Nifty Wanderers and... It's going to be difficult, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with Abbey Vale just because of my uh, my like for the likes of the Aiden Kerr and whatnot. <laughs> I'll go for a uh, W star to, to win it and get into the the playoff for uh, promotion. I think I think they'll Brilliant. be more than capable for me. Moving across then to the east of Scotland, and we'll cover off a bit of everything across the east of Scotland as best we can. Uh, there'll be the obviously the the Premier Division, so. When Lithgow Rose promoted, their uh, B juniors went, didn't have a licence, so they were automatically promoted. So that's obviously a big void for the, the East Scotland Premier League. And it'll be, a, I think for me, a pretty, it's a pretty even division. It could be any team between probably six or seven that could potentially make a run for it and, and go on and, and sorry and win that, that, that division. Because I don't think there's any team that for me that stands out as someone that's, that's going to really run away with it like the way uh, Lomoth Goros did last season so I think when you look at say Saki, Pennycook, maybe Genefield and maybe Broxburn, Dundonald, there's, there's plenty of teams in there that I think are going to be more than more than capable of challenging so it's going to be a, an interesting season Chris. Yeah I actually agree I think Lomoth Goros were such a, a strong East of Scotland side that it's going to be difficult um, for a club to replicate that that sort of dominance because obviously just because of the strength of the 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 team that Lanarkshire had and still have obviously in the Lowland. Um, I guess if you were to, there is top teams, but I think you're right. I think they're more more balanced. I, I've not seen any, uh, you know, I've not seen like the wow signings that you've maybe seen in the West of the Lowland League, uh, some East of Scotland sides. I mean, Muscle Bra are a strong side. Socky, we always kind of talk about Socky. Uh, you know, Ross Cavan is obviously going to get the goals there. Genefield, they're a new management. They signed uh, Jordan Northcott, uh, who was at Breakin City last season. Uh, been in the Lowland before with, uh, I think, well, it was a BSC Glasgow at the time. So um, he's a he's a decent player, a, a decent pickup. Genefield could be interesting, obviously, with the, the change in approach. Uh, probably got to mention Penny Cook, all the issues that they've had with managers. Callum Elliott leaving there. You're kind of worried about Pennycook 
Um, but they did announce Lewis Cole. Funny enough, just before we were recording the last podcast, which is a habit of theirs, but luckily we were covering the Lowlands, not the, the east of Scotland. Um, it's going to be a, it's still going to be a struggle for Penny Cook. I think uh, they're going to have to pick up a lot of players. Um, you know, they lost a lot of few, a few others to likes of Broxburn and and their league rivals. Probably won't pick up a lot from Edinburgh. United because a lot of the Edinburgh United players seems to have went to Vale of Leaven for some reason. So um, it's an interesting one, uh, Lewis. And I don't know. East of Scotland Prem is is going to be very open. I think I, I wouldn't shock me to see the likes of maybe Dunbar doing quite well, uh, who just got promoted. So promoted, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I'm not as certain on uh, the East of Scotland this season than I was last year. Uh, Talking up Lynn Lithgow Rose. But um yeah, you'll have your usual suspects of Socky and Gene Field up up there. But I think it's it's maybe of a case of the same in the West, but certainly I feel like this is anyone's title in this league, more similar to the South of Scotland, actually. No, I totally agree. I think the Penny Cook thing for me is that it's the probably the concern about them is that that high turnover of manager. That's what I think the fourth manager in less than a year. It seems like the a very high turnover, which not good for stability for any club and I think they have to try and cement that down and see if they can go and, and try and push on and I think Salke we know are, are a good side and probably better known for being a kind of cup side in, in, in recent years but I've been right at the top in terms of the league campaigns as well and it maybe goes a wee bit under the radar because you see them in the South Challenge Cup, you see them in the Scottish Cup and it's, it's that thing there for them is that they've got a real chance to probably go on and and try and better what they've done last year because we know they're capable and I think that's the thing that, that stands out for me. So I think if I'm going to go on a on a prediction for the the, the Premier Division in the East, I'm going to go I'm going to go with Socky for me, Chris. I think they look I think they look like they can build on. I don't think they've lost a lot of players that they really are going to make that much difference. I think they've still got the guys that were, were good for them last year and that'll be I think a massive thing for them in terms of that stability and being able to go and kick on from where they were last season. Yeah, um, a big loss for Musselburgh because I think they're up there too. Is obviously Matthew King retiring, club legend. Um, he was a, a you know the mainstay for years, a really good attacker, but uh, him retiring is probably not ideal for Musselburgh. But it's they're interesting, but I'd probably have to agree at this moment in the time. Um, Socky for me too, but I think it's. I think there's more to come from the East of Scotland, although we're late pre-season and the leagues, the leagues are about to kick off. The, the nature of non-league is, you know, first couple of games, play, uh, teams might say, oh, this isn't working. They'll get a couple of guys in. Um, so the whole dynamic of a team can change within, you know, a few weeks, a few months. Uh, football is a, a, a fast thing. So if um, some of the teams we mentioned don't get the good start, uh, especially like some muscle bra, you would think that they would they would go to the bank and and maybe uh, make make a withdrawal for a for a few players. I think well, if you've got that in your locker, then you're definitely going to need to do it. I think that's the way football in general is going at this level. Well, I'm sure we'll come on to some of the West Scotland teams and, and the money that's been spent there. So it's maybe not as, as drastic in the East of Scotland, I would say, uh, on that front. But certainly, if you've got the dough in the bank, then definitely make it make it yeah, worthwhile. Well, uh, Chris. Uh, what about the rest of the divisions? Anything stands out for you? I think the one team we probably want to talk about, Port Cameron Juniors, uh, ex Syngenta, I guess, as they were. They uh, <laughs> all kind of moved over in, in the middle of the, the season last season. They obviously talked about money in the bank. I'm sure they'll have plenty of that at Cameron, and it would be very, um, very easy for them to, to sign new players. They did so, as I say, brought in the, the good players from Syngenta last season. Uh, they've, I think, strengthened again, and I think I've heard of some rumours of players that they're also looking at to, to add to their squad, and certainly think that they came on the first division will be someone a team to watch. Yeah, definitely. Um, the old St. Jenna, really. Yeah, I mean, they've. Got, I, I actually saw, I think, one of their um, lineups recently, and it's pretty much similar squad to last season, bar a, a couple of signings. So, very, very strong team. Scott Sinclair was obviously a decent pickup from Ken Beef, uh, a striker that obviously can get goals. So, but yeah, I'm quite impressed with Kamelin. I'm guessing they'll probably be among the favourites for that division. But I think one of the interesting ones, and we we tend to only really talk about it with Stirling Uni and maybe Edinburgh Uni, but uh, Harriet Watt obviously uh, in the first division after getting promoted. 
the interesting thing for them this season is the fact that they're going to be playing in the, the British Premier North of the Bucks, the same league as Stirling Uni. So that'll be a challenge for uh, Bij and the lads. They have lost a lot of decent young players, um, you know, as, as they do. So it'll be interesting to see how they do um, in the first division and, and, uh, and in the Bucks, really, because it's, I don't know if they've got a team to really, you know, to not to not to say not to compete, but I think it, I think Beige is going to really have a have a, a task on his hands to to do well on both uh, both fronts. But we'll wait and see. I wish them all the best, obviously. Nah, I, I think you're right. I don't know an awful lot, but Harry won't myself. But I think you've got to tap into that market of you know attract players to your union. I think they can do that. So it could be they could be anything. I think we always see that with any union team, whether it's Harry or what Edinburgh. Uh, still in uni, Glasgow uni, I think they're always the teams that you look at and you think, well, it just depends on luck. If you get a couple of good players that, that sign up to play at uni and decide they just want to play, I guess, for fun to a point, it's, it's probably uh, it's like that, that kind of thing where you go to, what is it, like Freshers Week or whatever, and you sign up and play if you want to take part in different sports. And it kind of works out that way for, for those kind of teams. Still in uni is probably a little bit different and they, they can attract players to come because they kind of want to to come and play at Stirling Uni for football and, and do their uni kind of alongside the football and they do the kind of the football the full time thing and but Harry anyway, William yeah, I think more than capable for me I think Camelin are the, the team to, to watch absolutely no doubt about that I think we've got great great players in, in that squad I think I've talked about Jamie Finlay <laughs> I was on the way I was going to mention yeah I've got, I've got a comment on Jamie Finlay once um, I still hope he one day plays for the buffs but um, we'll see <laughs> uh, but he seems to be doing, enjoying himself out of Camelin and he's going to Barely rip up that first division, no doubt about it. And Kelman for me, the team uh, to 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 win it uh, and certainly get promoted next season. Elsewhere across uh, the other divisions, I guess one team we'll talk about: Chris Bonus Athletic lost our probably the, the the three main players over the summer. Uh, and for me, I think that's a, a big concern for for Bonus Athletic getting promoted and and all those guys moving on. Well. From what I've heard, they would have got a decent bit of money for them. So um, probably money that they can use to rebuild. Obviously, losing TV like to Dylan Patterson, yeah, it's not. It's not. We're not going to see the the score lines we we saw last season with with Bonus Athletic. In fairness, there's a really good Armadale Thistle side in there as well. So um, probably be. I don't. Do I even call Bonus Athletic a challenger or that? And that I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, if I'm looking at the, it's a wee bit unfair simply because they're the two te- teams at top of the league just because alphabet order. That's right, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so Armadale are obviously a, always a class out of it. They've got Colin Strickland. Obviously, they lost um, Scott Dial going to going to Bonesh United. So, but um, they're always going to be a, a top side in the the sort of lower east of Scotland regions. Um, yeah, I'm not really convinced by a lot of the other sides. I'm guessing it would be between Armadale, who would probably be my my firm favourites, and Bonnes Athletic. I'm not utterly convinced that they they'll be the same Bonnes, but simply because of the players they lost were way, way, way um, below their their natural level in terms of their ability. So um, it'll be interesting for Bonnes, but I, I would say Armadale were certainly my favourites for the for the second division. And then the third, don't know an awful lot about the third division uh, myself personally, Chris, but one team I noticed were added into the division this year, Linton Hotspur, uh, were both <laughs> Spurs fans and they play in blue, blue and white hoops, so I can only root for one team in that division. Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly be talking a lot about Linton Hotspur, uh, the new boys on the block in the third division. I hope they do well, come on the Spurs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the interesting one there for me is um, Craig Royston because of the... The new approach, I don't know if you saw this, Ben, but they're they're essentially gonna be a I'm guessing a sort of feeder club for Edinburgh City. I don't I don't know in terms of name changes if that, that happens. I believe they were talking to the SFA. I don't know the, the inner details of how it's gonna work with, with the, the sort of feeder setup uh with Edinburgh City. But I mean that could be an interesting one in terms of youth. Craig Royston got a lot of respect for the guys at Craig Royston, but they have been um I'm guessing what I would say is mismanaged over the last few years. They've kind of fallen away. They've had different managers, a lot of players in and out the squads 
for whatever reason. It's just whatever reason the club wasn't working. So uh, Edinburgh City coming in and kind of Craig Royston being part of Edinburgh City. Um, again, I don't have details on the name changes and stuff like that. Uh, that's uh, that, that's going to be very interesting to see how that works and to see if they can actually put a really good side together. Uh, I don't know who they've got signed up at the moment or how involved Edinburgh City are, are at the moment. I'm guessing they are, but um, it's a wait and see with that one. One one name change we never actually mentioned from the Premier Division is uh, probably an easier one on you, Ben. But uh, Lovie and Fissel, Hutchie Vale, are now just Hutchie Vale or Hutchison Vale. Um, a lot of people were a wee bit annoyed. You know, a lot of the old, the older players, obviously, that, you know, I never played for Hutchie Vale. I played for Lovie and Fissel because they, there was two teams that came together, obviously, Hutchison Vale being the youth team, Lovie and Fissel being the senior side. So uh, now that they're just Hutchison Vale as the senior side, I think it has rubbed up people the wrong way in some respects. So, um, yeah, it's... it's I don't really have any thoughts uh, on that. I mean, I'm not from that area of Lovian or that, so I, I'm not as passionate as some people I've seen on Twitter about it. So uh, one thing I will say is I, I know Hatchie will get a lot of stick in terms of how they conduct business of picking up youths and stuff like that. I don't really know anything about that, personally. I've heard stories, but I, it's been a generational thing for years. Obviously, Hatchie Vail, you know, always had the best youths and in the Lovian uh, region, so um, yeah, but I'm I'm not from Lovian, so I don't know the the complete ins and outs. So forgive me if I'm not being as harsh as I should be here. <laughs> and I don't know, think Chris, so I'm not going to comment on that one. I'm just going to leave that for you. Uh, I, I'm happy to know that it's going to be less of a mouthful to say if I have to say in the <laughs> podcast, and even more so if we draw them in the cup again, then it will make my graphics much much easier to make. So uh, I'm happy enough for that. So I don't know if they're changing the badge though, because it's still the Lo- Lovian Fissel Hutchie Wheel badge. So maybe it's a maybe coming I'm... up in the future. Yeah. Somebody who has any badge redesign can get stuck into that and see what they can come up with there. But we'll move on then to the one probably everyone's been waiting for from us is the West Scotland uh, Football League. There is four divisions this year and we've obviously had the five teams relegated from third division to make it the kind of linear leagues and everyone's got a, got a place now within the, the I guess, the, the West Scotland side of the pyramid. Um, but we'll start, as we'd always do, in the Premier Division. And Chris, last season, Beath were champions. Um, do you think they can do it again? Um, I think there's a strong chance they can. I think no one really expected them to do as good as they did last season. A bit like kind of Sterling Uni, obviously Sterling Uni won the the Lone League, but uh, they they were certainly a surprise package for me. Uh, the big thing, obviously, that's been going on this summer for for Beeve, and I, I think Strain is going to probably be annoyed that I mention it, but obviously Josh Fowler, um, he's been attracting interest from the likes of. What was it Motherwell and uh, Kilmarnock? I think Kilmarnock, Kilmarnock yeah. So I believe he's staying. I did see some sponsorship um, opportunities for him. It does look like he's staying at the moment. One thing I will notice when I sort of done the stats and done the achievements for the the beef players was Andy Monk had some really good return in terms of goals Very last good year. Player, yeah. Um, there was a lot of talk about Josh Fowler, but Andy seemed to have a really great season last year. I'm not. That concerned about Beef not being a challenger, I think they will be up there. Uh, I do believe that there is other teams, though. But yeah, I, I mean, realistically, ha- having won the league last year, you would think that they would they, they they could easily repeat. Yeah, I think, like we said before, they're a good team. I think the important bit will be that that Josh Fowler uh, situation, whether or not he stays, or whether or not he goes. I think he's been back in the team and played a couple of friendlies now. They signed Kieran Diver from from Renfrew, who's a yep. very very capable striker. So for me, that's a either a great addition to having Josh Fowler or a good replacement, uh, somebody who knows where the goal is and can score goals. You've got guys like Carlo Montel, like you said, Andy Monk. You mentioned very capable. They've added um, Ryan Monning as well, very good player in this level and I believe I think they've got Aaron Mason potentially coming in I think I've seen some stuff in, uh, from Talbot from Talbot yeah that I think yeah, been yeah. going on doing the rounds for quite a while and uh, he was on playing Marvel I think yesterday that he'd signed I haven't personally seen anything at the moment but it looks like that uh, if he comes in that's another really good player because I think yeah. Aaron probably had the pick of the clubs to go to he could have been um, probably in other divisions if he really wanted to and say 
B will be good. I think uh, there's there's no doubt about it. Chris Strain's a good manager. We all we all know that, and he's he, he knows how to win matches and, and half teams challenging. So B will be right up there Aye. for me, no doubt about it. But I think when you look across the rest of the division, I don't think it's is 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 cut and dry as maybe we'd have thought last year. I think we obviously spoke about Darwin in, in in great detail. Uh, expecting them to win and it, and it looked like probably from Christmas they were they were going to do that and they obviously fell off a cliff last year after the, the Aberdeen uh, success and I think the, with Darvo you look at the changes that have happened there with, with Tony Mack and Alan coming in, he's not the manager that I thought would have came into to Darvo, I was expecting kind of bigger names and kind of more maybe we'd say modern uh, managers that Tony's a bit more old school and not, not a manager I'd say have would have a, a great success. They've Darvel have obviously lost a few players to East Kilbride, uh, and a couple of uh, div- boys have went back up to to League Two and, and uh, I think League One. So I think the one thing that stands out for me around Darvel is they've been able to hold on to guys like David Syme, uh, Ian McShane, Thomas Riley. Uh, you look at maybe Craig Moore is another uh, good hold for for the, for them. I don't think for me that. The additions the Darvel side are that exciting. Uh, beyond, I think Andy Leachman and, and Graham Wilson from from Auckland Lake, they are both very capable. I keep saying capable on this level, but that's that's a, a fact. Andy Leachman could be playing probably League One Championship as, if he wanted to, and no no doubts about that for me. And he chooses to play at uh, Auckland Lake for all his time, and, and, and chose to move, move on. I'd heard some rumours that, that that Andy was going to move on probably in December, January last year. And so it looks like he has, and, and that's a great pickup for Darvel. But I don't know, I don't think that happened under uh, Tony McAnally. I think that was kind of done by the sounds of it, probably a wee bit earlier than that. And all right, um, I'm not sure that, that I'm sure he was actually announced before um, Tony came in. I think I'm not 100% sure, he maybe me fact check that one, but yeah, I don't think Darvel are going to be a team that they were last season. I just don't think that that'll be uh, a big one to. What do you expect from, from Davo, Chris? Oh, they're a capable side, obviously. I think what was weird, I guess, I don't know if maybe East Bride were interested in them, but Darvo particularly seemed proud that they, they extended the uh, Ian McShane's contract <laughs> and, they, and it was pinned up on Twitter and everything. I'm guessing... I'm guessing there was a couple of clubs after after Ian and, and Darwell managed to hold Justin on. Justin Butter, sorry. <laughs> Is that what it was? Oh, okay. Uh, right. yeah, well, I'm sure we'll some... talk about I'm sure we'll <laughs> talk some, about them soon. Heard some good rumors about them, but yeah, they'll have their own little section this podcast probably in about five minutes' time or so. Uh, stay tuned for that one. Darwell, yeah, it's Andy Leishman's a top goalkeeper, and when I saw him in the the, the cup final last season. I couldn't believe how buff he was. Like he's, he's like, I think I made a comment about him hitting the gym or something like that. But he was he was properly built eh? and uh so as well. <laughs> like he's like just when you see him in goals I remember we played him in the semi final of the West Scotland Cup and it was like um and the penalty shoot he just filled the goal and you're just like how do you beat this guy? <laughs> like he saved two penalties on that day and like hey he's a top 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 level keeper that's for sure. And uh yeah, similar to yourself. I don't think Darvo is, or maybe is, what's the word, I guess, flashy as they were or previously, or probably don't have the depth that they did, but um, still, look, I think they'll still be a challenger. No, nah, I think, I think, yeah, they obviously have the, talking about money in the bank and all that, they've got that there. That, there's no doubts in my mind. If they, if they get into a bit of a spot, they'll be able to go and strengthen their team with uh, spending a bit of cash. So Darvo will, will be capable. Elsewhere, Pollock, you look at uh, Stuart Maxwell's kind of, he's had now what is it be what his second season in charge and been able to have his own kind of make his own stamp in the on the team. Looks like he's had a bit of a clear out, shall we say, across the, the Pollock team. Uh, he lost a couple of players to Johnston Borough again. Uh, as I say, we'll talk about them just shortly. But <laughs> um, what do you expect from Pollock, Chris? I quite like their squads. Uh Pollock are an interesting one. They've always had a sort of really heavy, what I would describe as heavy squad with a lot of players. And obviously, they're backed up by their, their under-20s as well. So, um, obviously, the, the guys have brought in are really right. The, it's particularly the guys from like says, Sterling Uni, for example, Ben Fry, Matty Burrows. Um, obviously, uh, Scott Forrester as well from Cali Braves, Luke Main. Uh, all the boys from the Lone League, I think, are really decent for the level. I think they'll do well. Uh, already, I believe... 
I saw Ben Fry has his own Pollock song or whatever. So they're so already that, yeah. appreci- they're already appreciating him. So um I think Pollock will be fine. I think well I do I think they're gonna be a very, very sort of top team. I'm not sure. But I, I do reckon they might be, you know, top four, top top six. Um they'll be a top team, but I don't know if they'll they'll be the, the team challenging, but I might be completely wrong. Next one then Ocken like Talbot. I say Probably been a bit of a all change there too. We mentioned Andy Leachman, Graham Wilson, Mark Shanklin's moved on as well. Uh, Keir Samson left. He's a massive loss for me in terms of uh, Ocken like Talbot to the success that they had last year in terms of winning the West Scotland Cup. I just wonder about Ocken Lake. I, I just don't. I mean, they obviously are a team that they know how to win, and, and so does Tommy Sloan as a manager. We, we know he's, he's he's done it all and he's seen it all and able to do it. There seems to be a. I think they haven't been able to attract the quality of player that I think that you were used to bringing in. I think you look at Pollock, you look at Darvo, you could probably argue St. Caddox, uh, Gart Cairn even uh, look more attractive prospects for teams. Clyde Bank, probably another one that we will we'll touch on just shortly for teams. And, and they're, they're struggling to bring in players. I've brought in a few from Irvin Meadow uh, and Connor Boyd and uh, Neil Sloves, who probably the best players for front of a medal last year, but not the same quality for me in terms of uh, the guys are used to having in that squad. And I think it'll be a, a tougher challenge for Ock and Lake Talbot. The Ock and Lake Talbot's watch, fans watching this will probably hate us already. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything new that, that I haven't said before. I think there were a lot of them were calling us out for, uh, for <laughs> the Darvo shouts last year. And I mean, Ock and Lake didn't do any more than win our West of Scotland Cup. Um, which is for Ocken Lake probably a, a poor season, let's be honest. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to expect from Ocken Lake Talbot, Chris. It's, a, it's definitely a change in the guard, if you will. Uh, you, you look at this, some of the younger boys that were there and you think maybe this is going to be the future of Ocken Lake, but obviously, like say, Ross Taylor moved on um, already. So, it's going to be very tough to keep the... To, I, I don't think we're going to have a team... Like we have with previous Auckland like sides, where guys are going to be at these teams for ten years, or you know, winning the, the you know the junior cups, the West of Scotland cups, the you know the West of Scotland leagues, potentially going up with the Lone League, the SPFL, or whatever. I, I don't know if it's going to. Ha- I think it's going to be rarer and rarer in football that you're going to have a, a club like Auckland Lake that have so many legends and icons because of the the guys that have stayed there for years and won absolutely everything under the sun. Um. It's a, just a different time. It's just a different time. There's more attractive clubs in terms of, prob- let's face it, finances. Um, there's clubs that are kind of getting their act together in terms of, uh, I, I guess, atmosphere as well. You know, the, the young ultras or whatever you want to call call it. And, I mean, that's a big boost to players. I mean, it's better than, you know, would you rather, like, fair enough if maybe a, a club only gets, what, 150 people, but if there's young guys there making a noise when you're playing football, that's uh, such a big boost compared to, you know, maybe old guys shouting and giving you abuse or whatever, I don't know. But um, I think there, there's a lot of clubs out there that potentially don't have the history, the same as Auckland Lake, but for whatever reason are are probably, I guess, what I'd like to call more modern now than than Auckland Lake. Uh, and, and you're looking at these sort of younger players, and obviously, if you're a football fan, you might know that Auckland Lake are a massive club and they've been successful in that. But, you know, the 18, 19, 20-year-olds know that now. You know, I think it's going to get to a point where I'm going to go to B. I'm going to go to B because they won the league last year. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to go to Cumnock because they won the, the Junior Cup. I, I don't know if the, the younger guys will know so much about the, the history of Auckland Lake. Uh, maybe not so much now, but certainly in seasons to come. We swear in the West Scotland Premier Division, a team we haven't talked about, Clyde Bank, Chris. They look like they've made some uh, important signings. I would, I would say this season they brought in James Grant from Broomhill. They brought in Keen Hughes from St. Caddox, Thomas Collins from Colwyn and Rangers. Pretty glad about that, but anyway, we move on. <laughs> and Callum Graham from uh, Irvin Meadow, uh, some some great additions for me in that squad. To it. An already very very good squad, I would have said. Yeah, Clyde Bank are, are up there for me, uh, definitely. I think what I see in that, obviously, they've got a, a, a top keeper in, in Kieran Hughes and uh, Thomas Collins. I know how much it hurts you, Ben, but really good. Uh, Graham, obviously from from Irvin. 
Meadow, really good players, and you, you mentioned obviously that team with Nicky Lowe. Come on, <laughs> yeah. of course, of course, we signed there. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Clyde Bank. I'm I'm really positive about. I think we we always are positive about Clyde Bank. We we always love the Bankies and uh, Gordon Gordon Moffat, and uh, really does a really good job. Whether I rate them as highly as possibly others, maybe not. I mean, I think they'll challenge, but I don't know if they're that. I wouldn't put them as the outright outright winner for me, um, which I've just came to that re- real realization now when, when I'm talking about them. <laughs> I, I don't know if they're the outright winner for me, um, simply because I think I'm probably given. I'm looking at Beaven, thinking that they were really good last season, and if you know they've they've only strengthened if they can keep Josh Fowler and have a guy like Andy Monk. Um, plus the guys that they brought in, I would say, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe going going backward here a bit with Beef, but um, yeah, I'm looking at their squad and thinking they're probably the strongest squad now, which is really weird to say considering I, we probably didn't rate them as highly last season. So, um, but yeah, I have no doubts that the Bankies will have a really good season. Um, I think it will be interesting in the West when I look at the West of Scotland now. I don't think there's a weak team in it. Um, and if you were to ask me about relegation, I mean, there's only one team that I think might struggle just simply because they struggled last season, but awfully. I mean, the, the, the teams that came up um, are all strong in their own right. I think it's going to be really tough, a really tough league this year. Yeah, I think for me, Clyde, Clyde Blank looked excellent. I think based on, on the squad on paper, they, they finished the season pretty strong with uh, the guys they had. Um in place and, and, and those additions only only make Clyde Bank better. They were, I think, finished uh, in the top five or six last season and I think they're a team that are going to be be up there. Um, we'll come on to probably predictions for the league just shortly, but um, the Clyde Bank fans are probably wondering um, if we're going to put the, the catch-up curse on them <laughs> and, and give them the uh, give them the, the position as, as table toppers it doesn't sound like Chris is so maybe the Bankies fans are, will be delighted <laughs> to hear that if, if it's just, if it's Chris it's the problem when it comes to the old catch up course but <laughs> looking around the rest of the, the division you mentioned the team there athlete Chris about teams that will um, potentially struggle are teams there that stand out for you in, in that kind of that area I don't know <laughs> I, I don't know and the reason being is because I, obviously some people might know that I do some of the transfers and that for, for football manager and I've, I've literally seen a lot of the West teams and I've done their transfers and I and I, I only see teams strengthening it's kind of a bit like the Lone League where the, where the, the, the sort of bottom half or the um, I mean you look at a team like Cart Guerin that's just been promoted and they, they, they're really strong for a, for, a, for a Prem team and it wasn't like last year where you where you saw maybe like say Peters Hill and Arfield and they were kind of like the the, the standouts for me to, to to potentially go down. And I, I honestly think Arfield the only one that I think that I'm kind of sort of nailing the wall that I think might struggle and be near the bottom. I mean, I, I I don't know if I can call the rest of the league, um, but teams that I think will be at the top. It's it's a very strong league, and when I look at that, when I keep looking at it and looking at the transfers that, that clubs have made, albeit you know, the likes of your, your Talbots probably aren't as strong, and there's a couple of top teams that aren't as strong, they're still stronger than you know being near the bottom, uh, and that's why I'm I'm really really struggling, uh, and I hate to put off really in that 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 sort of <laughs> bracket by themselves, but it's just it's such a strong league. Um, I think you'd probably agree, Ben. <laughs> it's really hard to call. Yeah, I think I think you mentioned there that the teams that maybe came up last season were the ones that you looked at were probably going to go down, and, and yeah, Cam Bessang and Peter Hill did that. Yeah. They they got relegated, um, and our team got relegated. But we won't probably talk about that too much because it's still a bit better for uh, myself. But anyway, uh, I think if you look at the teams that have came up, I got to agree. Gart Cairn um, look look pretty strong, and yeah, seem to have. I think the things that, that probably can be slang and, and Peter's Hill, for example, and probably Arthur didn't have it, is that, that we keep saying it, money in the bank. St. Caddox are the exact same. I've seen St. Caddox yeah. play already this season in a pre-season friendly against us. Uh, they've got a very good manager, and Martin Fellows there, who's now building his own squad, and, and that's obviously changed around. So I think St. Caddox are going to be up there. They can go to the go to the bank and, and get players in if, they, if they're struggling or they, they come into a bit of a situation with... 
maybe injuries and suspensions. They've got a good under twenties um caliber player there that a lot used to go by twenties moved across to St. Catholic's twenties yeah. by all accounts. So they'll have players in depth that they'll be able to help them and, and definitely have something St. Catholic's may be up, up towards the top. But I'm actually surprised that not more people are actually thinking uh, about St. Catholic's to be near the, the top and challenge because I mean essentially it's the East Kilbride team of last year plus uh, some of the you know the older East Kilbride guys, your Anton Brady, your your Craig Malcolms. Um, one one that the guys are probably not talking about is um, Taggart coming in from Benburb, who's a very very decent attacker. Uh, I think he was a top scorer as well last year. So um, I don't I don't know how much in terms of game time he'll get, but he's there's a lot of depth in that St Caddick side, I would say, and uh, I'm actually quite excited to see them. Obviously, I'll probably be rooting rooting for them. Uh, you know, Martin and Mark McKenna are obviously. You know, great guys and big fans of them. I think we talked them up towards the end of last season where they would leave East Kilbride and St. Caddox has obviously been a really good destination for them to go for what they're going to, they're allowed to, to to build their own team uh, by the looks of it. And um, they certainly have a lot of East Kilbride uh, elements there. Yeah, I mean, it was probably a wee bit of a, a surprise to see uh, John Doyle moving on from St. Caddox kind of towards yeah. the end of the season. It was quite, it was kind of few games to go he, he obviously got relieved of his duties and, and Martin Fells was lined up Martin Fells is probably a manager that, that hasn't been talked about probably in the Western Scotland for a number of years but he's 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 come in he's done his job he's called Bride and earned his earned his stripes if you like and he's now got his own team and a prime, the Premier Division who as you say will will challenge they'll be they'll be up up towards that, that league top of that league no doubt about it we mentioned John Doyle Chris he's now at Cumnock um, Brian McGinty left uh, Cumnock uh, under health reasons after winning the, the Junior Cup and it was all change at, at Cumnock and it seems to have a bit, a bit of turmoil for me at Cumnock at the moment. John Doyle's come in, they've got obviously got an issue there with Jordan Moore who's, who's looking to move on and they're kind of looking to get a fee, what I understand is a very big fee for, for Jordan Moore, uh, struggling to get him a move. I've not seen anything from the likes of Jamie Wilson or Kyle McCausland in the in the preseason games. I don't know if those guys are injured or what's happening there. They haven't haven't featured. It's it's not the Cumnock team that that won the the Junior Cup for me right now. That, that's that's playing in these friendlies. So I think Cumnock are a team that I'm looking at that potentially could be in that struggling category. I think if if they don't get their act together in terms of building the squad out and, and getting the get it going, then it, it could be diffi- a difficult season for Cumnock. It's an interesting one. I, I think you're spot on. Obviously, Jordan Moore wanting to to leave. Uh, I mean, he's our main guy. We've talked about Jordan a, a number of times on this podcast. Uh, big name, McCausland, obviously, you mentioned. and uh, you, There is a certain loyalty to managers, I would say, and um, probably more so than clubs in some regards um, at this level. And I think it's difficult. I mean, we... We probably saw it. I don't know how unfair this is to say, but certainly I, I get the impression, is what I should say, that it was similar to the previous Pennycook manager, where players probably didn't buy into him um, potentially being the right guy to put the club forward or maybe didn't like his ways of training or whatever the case has been. But we have seen it in the past where, for whatever reason, players just didn't fancy the manager. And we've seen it at the very top levels. And I don't know if that's true. Uh, in fairness, in the the case of Cumnock, but it doesn't um, but it doesn't look good when when your key players are are not playing for your side, and then obviously, you know your top top striker wants away from the club. Uh, whether that has anything to do with the manager, whether that was always going to be the case come the the end of the season, start of the the season, it might have been. Um, but it, there's, I think you're right. There's definitely something going on at Cumnock, whether that's down to the manager or the club or whatever um it's hard to say but certainly it yeah it's, it's not looking great either way for 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 all parties elsewhere in the prayer division anything else stand out for you Chris? i think the one team for me at the moment hurlford looked like they've okay, had a good pre-season certainly has some good results in pre-season they brought in lewis morrison who's a i think he's a top top striker at this level and he he adds a lot to, to hurlford and uh, apart from that uh, there's not a lot of teams in, in we haven't mentioned, I guess, we haven't covered off uh, Glen Afton, Oven Meadow, Rob Roy, Largs, your beloved Largs, of course, and <laughs> Spoon. Uh, I don't see none of those teams get challenging. 
I think you look at maybe some of them didn't see an awful lot yesterday from other Meadow personally, and I know the Meadow fans watching this will probably be like, yeah, you're just a bit of Buffs fan, but I genuinely didn't see an awful lot from them that, that suggested that they're going to be any great shakes this year. Um, anything else there, Chris, that you wanted to cover off? L- Lags lost a, a fair good few players. Uh, lost the, the young keeper, Jamie Walker, to uh, to Beave. Obviously, yep. I think he's going to be back up. So, yeah, I don't have any issue with Larg simply because obviously my the main man there will so uh, gets them goals, saves them in a lot of ways. But in fairness, David Ramsey as well uh, has been you know really decent for Largs as well. So the, the the partnership there, I've not really seen much in terms of signings for Largs. I would say that's probably the the one thing. Um, haven't possibly been keeping an eye on them as much as as other clubs. In fairness, so they might have brought in a, a few signings, but certainly. We're probably looking at the division below uh, for the for the eye catching signings, uh, which is a bit weird for the West. Obviously, um, I'm sure we'll get into it probably momentarily. <laughs> which what which, which one's the standout? Chris? What, 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 must be it must be that signing of uh, Dario Nemo for Quinn Rangers <laughs> is the one that, that stands out for you in that division. Colburny Ladeside have actually signed her. <laughs> They'll have a really good team, by the way. Um, anyway, as as I said, we'll move on to the first division. Probably plenty to talk about there. Obviously, I have a, a vested interest this season in the, the first division, given uh, Cohen Rangers were the other team to get relegated alongside Canberra Line Rangers and Peters Hill. But I think before we get on to my beloved Cohen Rangers, we'll, uh, we'll just go straight to the point and we'll talk about Johnston Borough. Um, what the fuck is going on there? <laughs> I don't know if it's American investors or I don't know. <laughs> so what? So what? So what? I think I, what I've, I guess, managed to understand is that uh, somebody from Johnston owned a, a company. I think that basically sold for a lot, a lot of money, millions and millions of pounds, and now lives in America. Runs his own company in America. That's I think pretty successful from by all accounts, but is from Johnston originally. I think he has connections perhaps to either the manager or the committee. I'm not too sure which it is, but there's some sort of connection to the the club anyway. And he's chosen to put um, or put or either put money in himself or has a group of investors who are putting money into the club, which is obviously you've seen from the transfers. They kicked off a Graham Dorans allegedly on a thousand pounds a week to Johnston Borough. Now, Johnston Borough will tell you that that's that the, the numbers are true based on one of the statements they put out the other day. Now, for me, do I really believe that Graham Dorans and Kyle Lafferty are are there because the Borough boys make a good sound with their drum? No, I don't think so. Um, that, that, that's what I'm going to say there. You mentioned to the. Uh, the atmosphere and stuff like that, but I'm sorry, but I've got to be, I've got to be honest. I don't. There's obviously money, and fair play to them. Nobody's disres- nobody's against them having money and spending money because everyone's done it in the in this le- at this level of football. Uh, but this is this is Darvel on a different level now. Darvel had money <laughs> for years and still do, and they probably pay a good average across the squad. You I mean probably got a lot of guys on a couple hundred quid a week in the Davos squad, but there's there was never a player who was out outspent on by by the by Mecca, by John Gall or whoever. That was always I think pretty average wages. I say average as a, a squad average and everyone was earning good money but at a good at a kind of fairly similar level. Johnson and Borough have blown out of the water if the, if the numbers say Graham Dorans allegedly £1,000 a week, Kyle Laffey is supposedly £1,500 a week, um, Dale Esplin, I've heard rumours of five £600 a week. We mentioned Ian McShane, they tried to get him on what was allegedly £800 a week. Uh, they obviously have money, which is which is totally fine, um, but they're going to have to go and absolutely rip up the division if they're going to. To if they've if got any great designs, guys like Kyle Lafferty and Graham Dons have got to be on it every week if that's the kind of dollar that's been spent. Yeah, I mean, I have heard of high wages before. It's not something I really like discussing, uh, simply because it's none of my business how many, how much people get paid, or you know, it really isn't. But 
I mean, you do hear things. Some I know for a fact are ridiculous, and uh, not concerning Johnson Brower, but I mean, in the past, I've heard you know about Nicky Lowe getting paid that amount at Easter Luncher, for example. And um, I, was he on high wages at Shire? Probably was, but probably not. Yeah, you know, one a grand a week or fifteen hundred a week for a part-time player. <laughs> West of Scotland, first division. <laughs> to me, it's mental. It's mental. I mean, I've always kind of admired the old Broomhill uh, pay structure where a lot of it's to do with uh, win bonuses and goal bonuses and, and goals like that. I, you know, the club saves itself a lot of money uh, in terms of that. I mean, you if, can. If they're doing shit, aye. Like, aye. If you're doing well, they're like, of course, yeah, but obviously, success is success, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, your, your basic wage is maybe, what, 100 and then you. You can get up to like 400, 500 if you're if you're doing if you are being successful. And I think that's always been the incentive for for teams like Broomhill that probably don't pay as much uh, as um, as other clubs. But the incentive is there to, is to do well, so that you are getting basically the same. But um, yeah, it's it's mad. Johnson Brower have a a mad team, and to me, they sorry to say, Ben, I'm guessing you, even though your you know buffs are in the same division, they have to be favourites for the league. They have to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sugarcoat it. We, we as a club don't have that sort of funds to to compete with with Johnston Borough. Uh, but I think I seen a good quote from somebody the other day, and it was around. Uh, I, I apologies, I can't, I can't quite um, remember who made the comment. I think it was probably, I think it was the Renfrew manager. I think it made actually made it. I think about it. And he said, "Oh, money's uh, football's not played on paper or something like that." And, and that's yeah. that's the facts. We'll we'll play Johnston Borough twice this season. We'll, we'll compete. With them in a in a match, but we've got to do we've got to do it, and the the aim is get promoted. And you don't don't have to win the league. Everyone wants the success of winning the league, hundred percent. But the the aim for the Colin Rangers to bounce back and get back into the uh, into the Premier Division because we we feel like we should be there. We or we should be there because we were crap last season, and, and that's what's happened, unfortunately. But but we feel we're a big enough club. We've got the SFE license, and, and we feel that we're we're good enough to be in the Premier Division, which, which we need to do and get back. So we'll not be concerning ourselves too much with Johnston Borough or, or even Drum Chapel. I think Drum Chapel will probably have a good bit of dough as well behind them to to, to bank, um, to spend some spending players. And I think for me, it looks like probably Johnston Borough, Drum Chapel, Coan Rangers, you mentioned Cole Burnley, probably a team that, that are. I think they've signed your... really well. I think yeah, they've, obviously, they've made some in... really good signings. Brought in a new manager and Colin Spence uh, from from Irvin Meadow, or who was at Irvin Meadow last, and uh, it'll be it'll be great to see Spenny next season. I'm sure he, he can't wait to see me at some point. I know he's a big fan, so um, it'll Is be he? probably not given him a <laughs> uh, But anyway, it'll be it'll be a good one. I think. See, for us, it's just absolute promotions crucial. There's three spots potentially four, depending on obviously what happens within the. Um, Within the the Premier Division, the, the slight change in ruling for everyone's benefit now. If um, it's not a case of if you if a if a licensed club gets promoted out the West of Scotland, and no no one comes down, then a, a fourth place team goes up rather than uh, the the third place team getting saved like you know set up last year. So yeah, you're potentially looking at f- four spots if if a, if a Darvo or a Clay Bank or an Auckland Lake, for example, uh, or St Ka- or St Carlos aren't licensed at the moment but um if, if any of those teams were to get promoted then certainly uh, there would be an extra spot so that's the aim for us it'll be different for us this season obviously going to some new grounds which will, will probably be nice in a lot of ways i'm looking back to how come i've done it um a couple of years back it was it was enjoyable for the fans they got to see new grounds they played against different teams obviously being you you want to be challenging at the top so you you want to have that success and Maybe the success brings in more fans and more people to come and see our games. We have the bonus, the Scottish Cup, which is another one that will stand out for us as a club. There's not many licensed teams in the first division, so there'll be there'll be that opportunity for us. And um, I think Rutherglen are the only uh, licensed club at the moment within the within the first division. So it'll be up to us to go and do what we can. I think we, we look good in pre-season as well. I think that's the other thing. We've, Despite them not winning any many games in preseason, we've been we've looked good uh, as a team uh, over that course, and it'll be an interesting division, but it'll be tough. I, I, we're under no illusions that that's going to be a difficult season for us. 
One thing, one, yeah, the first division looks absolutely cracking in terms of the league, in terms of the teams in it. Uh, even teams like Ashfield um, look fairly decent. So, uh, excited to see how you're doing that that division. Yeah, I'm looking for. I say looking forward to it. it'll be. I think I have, I've mentioned this a couple of times on the um, on the podcast in the last um, times. I was kind of almost falling out of love with football a bit. Still not hundred percent sure that I, I actually enjoy football. I'm still <laughs> trying to get to that point. I like talking about it. I must admit, from uh, so there must be something there that I do enjoy. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Obviously. With my situation, I can't remember if I've talked about this in the podcast, podcast, but I'm going to be a dad um, in October, so uh, all change for me, you might have to reprioritise things and we'll see what happens and, uh, with, with football, but yeah, the first vision is going to be interesting, it's between the three teams I mentioned, it's Johnson Borough, John Chapel and ourselves, I think, for for that top spot, but Johnson Borough do have the, the bank uh, in place to to go and do things. Kyle Laffey is probably going to score about 50 goals a season. Let's be honest. Well, he should score about 50 goals a season. He played in like, the Champions League about two years ago or something like that, three years ago. Right, we'll look across the rest of the divisions in the West Scotland uh, Football League. You'll start in the second division. I think for me, Chris, second division could be anything. You look at the teams that got promoted, the Drossen went and Rovers, probably a team that are going to be very, very capable. I think they've got some good players still that the man should retain, which I think is probably a, a good thing for, for them. Uh, anything else that stands out for you in, in that in that division? Uh, Ardross and Winning Rovers, you mentioned them, I guess. Um, Glasgow Uni are an interesting one. They're, they're more of a team that I'm sort of keeping track of now. They've lost a, a few players. Uh, he's going up to uh, Clyde, I think he moved to. So, really decent move for him. Um, Cumbernauld United, I guess. Uh, but in terms of favourites, you're probably right. I think it's an open, open league. Uh, Obviously, one team I've not really seen much of because uh, they still have us blocked on Twitter, but the Caledonian locomotives, I have no idea about their, their side and it's uh, meaning I, I know nothing about them uh, simply because I can't can't see them. <laughs> uh, like, likewise, I think I'm blocked to my personal account and I'm also blocked on the Coen Rangers page and I don't even have a clue what Coen Rangers page done. So, um, yeah, I don't have a clue what's happening there uh, within uh, Caledonian locomotives. Ross Rail United, whatever they're called these days. I'm, I've lost track of the name changes. There's, there's millions of different na- names for, for those guys. and um, Yeah, I, they, they could be anything, I think. Looking down the the, le- the level, I think Muir Kirk, obviously, I think they did pretty well last season. Um, but apart from that, maybe Mary Hill, I think they've got some decent players. I've seen them in the Cup last year. They've retained some guys and will probably continue to strengthen Speaking but, of atmosphere, maybe Vale of Clyde. <laughs> I noticed their game got abandoned yesterday, which uh, not great. Apparently, there was a bit of a, a dust up between them and the uh, shots. So, um, I think it was mentioned it's, it's crowd trouble, but I think from what I've heard, though, is that one of the players got a bit, a bit messy with one of the potential one of the committee on the other sides or something. I'm not too sure, but it's not as, as cut and dry as I think as it was made out to be. But yeah, that was an interesting one between shots and. Um, yeah, but I don't know an awful lot in, in that in that second division. It'll be interesting to see uh, how that plays out. Moving on to the third division, then this is another interesting one. I think for me, you look at some of the teams that, that did pretty well last year. Irvine Victoria were probably a team that were, were unlucky and just missed out in promotion. I think they can they can do a lot. Uh, Greenock Juniors probably another team that could be, be yeah. very capable at this level. Port Glasgow seem to have made some some good signings and the likes of Mark Miller, I think he's moved on to there. Um, so definitely some teams in there that I think can challenge. The, there's part of teams that are in that division that are kind of on their way on the downward spiral as well, which is I think unfortunate. And I don't want to see teams going on the down on the downward spiral, but that certainly seems to be the case. I think in that in that level, Keller Rovers a team probably on the opposite side, on the right way up and and. They're kind of having a different approach in the sense that they're bringing in some younger guys and exploring loan markets and things like that that are probably a good thing. Do we talk about Glasgow United, Chris? Um, oh, is that, is that one me? Oh, you would just dodge that one. Uh, I, I, you, I was I was waiting for to ask you that question. Um, look, it's 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 one of those divisive subjects. We've kind of talked about it in the background and we've maybe made comments in the past about it. So for everyone's benefit, in case you haven't um, heard at this point, that um, Glasgow United are looking to sign uh, David Goodwillie, um, who 
for for legal for to cover ourselves legally was convicted in a civil court um, yeah. on rape. Uh, nothing, no criminal charges were brought against him. However, that that comes with its own. I think we've seen a bit backlash when he say tried to say for Wraith and go back to Clyde, etc. And there's also an upheaval and it's a very Chris says a very divisive subject. Um and I think Glasgow Union are looking Glasgow United, sorry, are looking to sign uh, David Goodwillie and give him a place to play, which if they want to do that, then that's fine. But I think they've got to realise that, that that comes with backlash. And I think no matter the rights and wrongs of the situation. I'm not going to go into that and in, in, in Neil's Chris on in no. any sort of great detail. Um, if you want to go and hear David Goodwillie's side of the story, there's plenty um things on Twitter and YouTube and things like that. You can go and um, search in your own time and, and, and do that. But I think it's a very difficult situation. It's kind of got, I think, a lot worse with Glasgow City Council have now got involved in, in the sense of uh, they, they want to take kind of ground access and things away. From, from Glasgow United and I think that's a difficult one for, for, for both sides both Glasgow United and the Glasgow City Council for me Glasgow United by all accounts get a lot of support from Glasgow City Council which I think is probably why Glasgow City Council are a bit upset by it because they don't agree with the signing rightly or wrongly again we can be here all day about that the, the rights and wrongs of that whole situation but yeah it's a very difficult one and, and it shines whether they like it or not, a, a bad light on Glasgow United. I mean, the the way I see it and the way I've always seen it is, I mean, we, you know, we talk about football and often we talk about, you know, we always say, let's not make things personal. I think we're getting into the political slash personal territory when we're, uh, when we're going into talking about people like David Goodwillie and the situation he has. I mean, one thing I, I think we commented on previously, I'm sure he was banned from Broadwood. Um, you know, after playing there for years for Clyde, so it's like there is some things that personal feeling. It's a bit ridiculous, but also, yeah, there's just a lot of backlash, a lot of heat. Uh, Glasgow United will know that. It seems like at the moment they're going to be backing David Goodwillie, but it doesn't mean other people will. For example, I'm sure there might be other teams and other facilities that that may think about not allowing them access or whatever. However, that goes. I mean, it's not just a Glasgow United, Glasgow City Council, um, David Goodwill thing. There's there's other clubs that I'm pretty sure might put up obstacles there. Um, from from my perspective, I I, I don't know. Um, it's a wait and see, but it's not something we we really discuss. We we don't try and get too personal on this podcast. We're here to talk about football. We're here to judge football, not judge people's personal lives and decisions and whatever else. I mean. We're not, you know, we talk about podcast. We're not James English for for God's sake. Yeah, so, you know. we are, we absolutely <laughs> are. And I think that's that's. Uh, I think we're we're here talking about the football. The, the situation is, it, it is what it is. It's not going to, it's not going to improve. Unfortunately, I think that's the thing no. is that that mud's going to stick with with David Goodwillie. There's people been very vocal about it uh, mm -hmm. on on social media. Uh, and, and and you you you're right. You're allowed to have your opinion. That's fine. Um, but if you're going to have the opinion, the thing the thing I always think about is uh, why 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 would you not sign him if you're going to have a, a specific opinion support? And I've seen a few people now being quite um, supportive of of the the situation for Goodwillie for whatever reason. But not not coming to your club though, are they? That's the thing I always think about when <laughs> these things happen, and and that's the in the situation it's what it is he's he's probably going to have to accept that that he's always going to be it's always going to be this way it's not going to change unfortunately and for him and but if he stayed at Clyde he probably would have been playing football forever more at Clyde and would have probably went under the radar a bit more but yeah as you say let's dispel a myth though let's dispel a myth people were bothered when he played for Clyde he got a yeah, lot yeah yeah 100% moves. 100% that, that's a that's when a he fact. left I don't know what the fuck oh, yeah I don't well, well, it was kind because... of breaking a roll there was there was straight I think it's because he went to Rafe and then yeah. there was I think the offer I get Val McDermott McDermott yeah, yeah she uh, she had some political, political sway apparently with, with Nicola Sturgeon the first minister at the time and, and it's it seems like Doors have been shut everywhere for for David Goodwillie. 
for what for good or bad, not for me to decide. But um, yeah, but people, yeah, people were still bothered about it. Clyde, he got hefty abuse, um, and let's not forget, it's not the innings changed. It's just um, I think you're right, though. If he stayed at Clyde, I mean, he would do. You know, wouldn't have been the same level, I guess. He obviously was moving to looking to move to Rayfair as a as a, a, a step up from from Clyde, and they were thinking to spend money at the time. Wraith obviously misjudged the situation, and then the backlash came from there, and probably brought the spotlight back on David yeah. Williams. And that's that's what where it is. But it's going to be what it's going to be now for for, for his entire football career, uh, and. Yeah, there's probably plenty of other bad characters in, in football. I mean, he's probably not the only yeah. person, but for his situation, it's, it's difficult and people are obviously emotionally attached to what happened and maybe seen some of the reactions from himself and, and the things like that at the time probably don't help that situation as well. I think you'll when you watch some of these things and read some of the stuff that's been said, it, I don't think they're really helping his cause personally. So, so. We move on to the fourth division. This is the division where we've seen a few teams relegated from the third division to make it a, a structure 16 across all the divisions within the West of Scotland Premier, the West Scotland Football League. Uh, we've seen Carlton Rovers, East Kilbride, Thistle, um, Luga Boswell, New Mains United, and Saltcoats Fix and Royal Albert uh, all get relegated uh, to the to the f- fourth division. Again, it's, it could be anything in that division. There'll be teams there that, that are looking to bounce back up. Carl Luke Rovers have the license. They obviously have a bit of funds and uh, able to support themselves. East Coast by this on our team that probably shouldn't have got relegated. They probably felt like were more than capable. They were obviously in a bit of disarray last season, so they'll have a bit about them. Knightswood, our team, have joined the league. Um, they could be anything they've joined. They got brought in this season um, on the vote. So, an interesting division, Chris. Yeah, again, it's one that. I'm not too familiar with in terms of the teams. I think the further we go down, I think it's harder to sort of keep track. Uh, Rossville, I've kind of been keeping up with them uh, a wee bit in terms of their signings. I've kind of been a wee bit, I have been impressed with, with some of the signings that they've made, but it's very hard to judge. Um, I, I do look at teams like Eglinton, obviously, you know, you know them quite well with, with the Buffs, so I hope they do well. Well, there's a couple of clubs that in the in that league that I certainly hope do well. Um, I do. I like the new Rossville, and I'm not just saying that because <laughs> the old Rossville have us blocked on Twitter. But um, the uh, Rossville Academy, as they as they once were, were known there, uh, always open and friendly, and um, kind of the, the similar kind of setup to maybe like a Cumbernauld Colts and stuff like that with the youth teams and whatnot. So I quite like that setup. Um, in terms of winning, winning it, I'm not going to lie, mate. No idea. No idea. There's just too many teams in there that I think. Probably at the level or are really are, are decent for the level, but ah, yeah, again, it's maybe a case of it's anyone's league uh, this year. I think for me, it's Carlo the standout. I think the Carlo Rovers are the standout in that division, as far as I'm concerned. I think nice. they, they're yeah. too good for this this that level, and and obviously have aspirations too to go up the divisions. I think they're not getting an SFA license to sit and play tier eight or tier nine yeah. Scottish football. So. I think for me, Carl Luke are the team you mentioned there, Glenn. You know them really well in terms of um, near neighbours over in the, the Eden Cashmore Memorial Park at uh, Corin Sports Club. They have strengthened as well. They've I think they've had some, seems like some new backers to uh, sponsorship that have helped bring in some more quality players. Last The last season, the guys they had were more kind of amateur based and came through the ranks as a youth team together. But they have strengthened, brought in guys like Graham Muir who very good player, capable, probably be playing uh, either top level amateur or could be playing third division easily. He's had a lot of success in the West of Scotland and the, the junior levels in the past. So uh, they also think Craig Connell from I think Luger, uh, who's a, a good player too. So yeah, I think England yeah, have I've got a, a chance. Of, I don't think they'll win the league personally, but they've probably got a chance of being right up there and, and, and challenging for the, the season ahead. And I think it seems like they've got some. Some grand plans to 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 go up the leagues and they want to do well and yeah I mean we ho- hope it works out for them uh, in a lot of ways and but yeah Carl look look I think just look too strong for me at the moment good well we'll wrap up there on the official catch up podcast thanks all for watching listening um, you can check us out on all your usual platforms YouTube 
all the podcast platforms, Twitter, at Official Catch Up. Remember, hit that like, subscribe, ring the notification bell and all that. Chris tells me that uh, we see some some success on that front when you do that. So I'm going to keep saying it and I hope we do it. It doesn't <laughs> cost you anything. I think that's the thing I'm trying to make the point to, to the bus fans is it doesn't cost you anything. It's free to hit, hit that button. It makes no impact on you. If you enjoy this channel, then please do uh, subscribe, hit like, all the good stuff that you can do. It helps us. We don't do this for... We don't, in fact, this costs us money to do um, each month. It doesn't... It's yeah. not a... It's a, by no means um, something we make loads of money on, but... If, if you do have a YouTube account or podcast platform, hit your like, hit your subscribe, and uh, appreciate, we'd appreciate it. But until next time, uh, have a good one. We'll be back probably next Sunday with another roundup of what happened in the Lone League, the West Scotland, the East, and the South of Scotland. Cheers.